uh, this lecture will be on the nature of God and how we can get to know God. There are only two things in this life we need to do. The rest is filler. One is to get to know God and the purpose of God, purpose of God's creation, and get to know ourselves, our purpose, and our purpose of creation. Today we're going to talk about God, how God came to be, and the purpose of His creation. First, I'd like to read something out of the Doctrine and Covenants that was given to Joseph Smith from God. This is in section 121, uh, 26, 27, and 28. 26 reads, God shall give knowledge by God the Holy Spirit, yea, by the unspeakable gift of the Holy Spirit. I got through the fire baptism in parentheses. That has not been revealed since the world was until now. Which our, 27, which our forefathers have awaited with anxious expectation to be revealed in the last times, which their minds were pointed to by the angels as held in reserve for the fullness of their glory. 28. A time to come in the which nothing shall be withheld, whether there be one God or many gods, they shall be manifest. 32. According to that which was ordained in the midst of the counsel of the eternal God of all other gods before this world was, that should be reserved unto the finishing and the end thereof. Well, I kind of give you a clue in that last one. The counsel of the eternal God of all other gods before this world was. That's a little clue to how many gods there are. Okay, my, I'm going to give you my experience with God, is which I base the rest of this talk on. Um, I have, I've been fortunate to have received uh, an audience, I guess through the fire of baptism, where you're reborn, with God the Holy Spirit. Now, everybody's entitled to this. All you have to do is seek it and work at it, and it'll happen. Uh, it has to happen. It's part of the program. Uh, I've, been, I've had my fire baptism. Uh, I know many people, other people that have, and I know that all of the righteous children, or even semi-righteous, can have this experience because it's a witness of the plan of God. Now, when you're involved in this experience of the fire baptism, uh, many people have had veils lifted so that they can better understand their purpose and the things going on about them. And that's what it's all about, is to get to know the truth of things. We're fed a lot of crap and baloney in this world, and that's what mostly is fed us through all of our institutions, including our religious institutions. They tell us stories to get us to give them money. But, during, but the fire baptism, I'll explain it, is when you're totally enveloped with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And it's like a fire, but it's a, a spiritual fire. You don't, you, there's an unbelievable feeling, which I can't describe, but it's a spiritual fire. And I've known some people spent three days in that spiritual fire. Mine was about 25 minutes. And there was four of us that uh, experienced it. Uh, two missionaries, an investigator for the church, and myself. It was an unbelievable experience. But when you come forth from that fire baptism is coming it's like you're coming forth from the womb of the Holy Spirit and so hopefully you'll be reborn and you have your sins forgiven now if we read I've read in the Book of Mormon where the fire baptism was administered uh, two or three times to the uh, Nephites as they went through uh, their lifetime you know even though he'd been reborn we still uh, have that mortal uh, thing with us that uh, causes us to go astray. Then we need to be uh, cleansed again through repentance. Now the second experience, everybody will experience this. These two experiences, everybody can experience them. And I've known several people that have experienced them and you can experience them too. The second experience I'm going to talk about is uh, 
getting to know our Savior, the Messiah. Now, one of the things that isn't widely known, but you can read about, about it in Isaiah and also in the Book of Mormon, I think it's even mentioned in the Doctrine and Covenants, that the crucifixion of Jesus Christ did not end when he was resurrected. You remember your little thing uh, that they tell you when you're taking the sacrament? That if you do it unworthily, you re-crucify Christ, and you really do. That's not just a funny statement or a story. It's true. If we take of the sacrament, the holy sacrament, and have feelings towards people, or we've done something we need to repent of, and take the sacrament, we're re-crucifying Christ. Or if we just don't do the right things, we're re-crucifying Christ. Now, does that actually happen? Yes, Christ has been is being re-crucified -re every minute of the day for the last 2,000 years since his resurrection. Like I, I have in the uh, this site, we have a uh, a booklet that you can read. It's called the Marred Servant, and that talks about the condition of Christ today. Uh, as we know in the Doctrine and Covenants and in the Bible, when he comes again, that he will be coming in red, drenched in the blood of the the saints, that he is uh, tread in the winepress of his wrath. Because they won't follow his rules, they won't follow his commandments, they won't follow his judgments. We're just a, I don't know what we call ourselves, we're stiff-necked people. And when we don't follow the, the laws and uh, judgments of the Savior, we re-crucify him. Now, I'm not talking about going to church on Sunday. That's the least of the things. The serious amount, serious principles of the gospel are all things common. Pure charity. No widows, no orphans, no debt, no uh, uh, All having, all having the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so we know the what's right and what's wrong. Anyways, I've had the opportunity in my life to know several excellent teachers. The first one being my first wife, Mary, who had a very close relationship with uh, with the Savior and many other individuals of. Uh, spiritual genius. Who is our God? On a physical plane, our mortal parents are our God. They're the ones that created the, the body in which we're in right now. Like I've said before, this is not me. I'm inside here. I'm in a body for this period of mortal life that was brought from the dirt of the ground and we'll return to the dirt. We'll never see this again once it dies. It's gone. There is a resurrection I talked about last time in the first in the first lecture. I don't want to get into that again. But God can be it is our parents. They're, that's our immediate God. The God that created us is our mortal parents. Our mortal parents, uh, when they came together similar to the sexual union of the mortal parents, only it was the spiritual union, they created our eternal essence. And so they are our God, immortal God, and we have our mortal God as our parents. So what we're doing on this earth is we're practicing working in the heavens, because it's the same plan in the heavens as it is, is here on earth. God is building a spiritual family of light. That's his purpose. His purpose is to build a spiritual family of light. And the greater his family, and the more righteous his family, the greater is the, the strength uh, of God. If he has no children that are righteous and that respect him, he will eventually lose his position as God. So that's why it's so very important 
that we support God because God is the one that keep, keeps us in this situation here in in the, the universe. One thing that that bothered me when I first started learning learning these things is that I didn't realize until I had the fire baptism that God, the Holy Spirit, is our immortal mother. That may seem shocking to some, but it's true. God the Father and God the Mother, as a spiritual unit, uh, created us. It's the same as our mortal mother and father did. They came together and created the body. So the inside here is created by our immortal parents. The outside was created by our mortal parents. When the translators of the King James... King James Version of the Bible were translating, they didn't have a knowledge uh, of these things that we're learning here in the last days. And so it was hard for them to translate. I remember at that time, uh, men still believed that women were under the curse uh, of the Garden of Eden. And uh, they believed they were superior. They believed that women were only good for uh, sex, taking care of babies, making food, and uh, as an instrument of entertainment. The translators were convinced that they were lesser beings, and the people, the men today believe that women are lesser beings. Women had to fight for a long time to get any rights whatsoever. But if you read the first few, few lines, in Genesis, it tells us how uh, we were created. In uh, Genesis 1, chapter 16, it said, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Uh, as in the words of all, all words of God, there are several meanings to what they're talking about. And as you get deeper into the Word of God, you'll understand more and more of the same Scripture. Uh, there was a uh, an individual I've known for some time who has some uh, prophetic statements sometimes. And we were, I was with him one day, and there's a there's a, uh, a three room cave that was formed by lava over near our ranch, and uh, that cave has a window in it, a window to the next dimension, for those that have the ability to see a window. And he was telling me that there's three watchers mother and two daughters guarding that window. The watchers could be women too, you don't have to be men. Remember, women and men in reality are equal in all respects. And, and these watchers were keeping people, the wrong people from going into the window. And he said he, he, he walked into the window and looked uh, out into a valley of green grass. We're in a desert out here. He walked into the window to see a green valley with a brook running through the center and trees uh, and, a, and a pathway going along down to the valley, which wasn't that deep. And he said he turned around to come back by the watchers, and there stood a man. Now I want to tell you about this man that stood there. A lot of people believe that Satan does not have a body. Satan has a body just the same as Jesus Christ has a body, just the same as you and I have a body. It's a mortal tabernacle that he has while he's here on this earth. He can't be involved in a mortal world unless you have a mortal tabernacle. And so he, he looked at my friend and he said, I rule the night. Satan said this. I rule the night, and Joseph 
rules the day. That's an interesting statement. Who is this Joseph? Well, we got Joseph that was the father of Christ back in the Meridian time. We got Joseph Smith, who was a prophet here in the latter days. Uh, but who is the Joseph that Satan was talking about? Joseph is another name for our God. It's not Joseph Smith. It's the Joseph that was the father of the Messiah. Another name for Joseph is Adam. We call him Adam because they didn't know his real name, the translator. So they called him Adam, first man. But Adam is the God of this world, not the God of this world at this moment. Satan is the God of this world at this moment. We have to have a little bit of a battle to get Satan to give up uh, his position. Uh, and that's what these problems in the last days will be. Uh, Satan is not going to give up easily because he has a very good thing going here. And the Messiah don't have that many followers. So the ones that are following him need to be as strong spiritually as they could possibly be to be a good soldier of the, of the Messiah. Another thing we need to understand, about, I'm trying to explain God from several angles. Well, Satan is the God too. He's the God of the lesser light. Adam, Joseph, is the God of the greater light. Adam was half of the team that created the whole thing. The other part was Eve or Mary. Mary is the uh, co-creator of our immortal essences with Joseph, her husband. Who is the father of Cain? Remember we had a thing, the translators made a mistake here and said Cain was uh, the firstborn of uh, of uh, our Holy Mother Mary or the immortal uh, God the Holy Spirit. It's not true. Cain is the son of a woman called Lilith. She was a sister to our mother uh, who we call Eve or Mary. And she has a job. Her job was to bring forth the opposition. She's the one that had relations with Satan in the garden and had to be expelled that same day because you can't have a pregnant mortal inside the, the womb of Mother Earth or the garden. So the, the day that, uh, that she uh, and Satan got together, but they got together after she partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because that finished turning her immortal body into a mortal body, which needs more explanation, but we'll talk about it later. And so God expelled Lilith pregnant with the, with the child of Satan into the mortal world. Now the mortal world was also at that, that day uh, with uh, our immortal parents came to the mortal world that same day because they knew when Satan and Lilith got going that they needed to get going. So they walked out on their own. They voluntarily walked out whereas Lilith was forced out. And that's the difference between the two philosophies, force or choice. And it started in the Garden of Eden. Now, if you, if you, the day that uh, Lilith walked out of the garden was the spring equinox. Now that went, and also our, our immortal parents walked out then as mortals. And that day was the spring equinox or the first day of the first year of this 6,000 year probation. And our calendar shows that uh, this was the, the first day. Now there's 12 months in the calendar of God and each month has 30 days. Uh, now that don't add up to 365 days, it adds up to 360. But the five days were days of no count and they were high Sabbaths honoring our God. Now, of course we stopped doing that. 
just like we stopped following all of the commandments of God, uh, the serious commandments. But uh, that gives us our calendar and gives us the day that our mortal parents and Satan and little walked into the earth. Now, if you count the days of a gestation of a uh, human being, uh, it's 280. If you if you number the days from the spring equinox, uh, count them to two, 280 days, you'll get the uh, birthday of Cain. The birthday of Cain is Christmas, September 25th. And that's why we have, that's why we celebrate it uh, so strangely, you know, giving gifts, taking gifts, not giving gifts to the poor, passing them up, giving it to the rich. That's not the program of God, that's the program of Satan. And that's why it's celebrated like that with tinsel and glitter, bows and wrappers. That's not God. God thinks does simply, simply and truthfully. So now you know why we celebrate Christmas in such a stupid way uh, if we're trying to think about it as the birthday of Christ. The, the Latter-day Saints know the birthday of Christ was April 6th. It's in the Doctrine and Covenants. We just, they just refuse, like they refuse to live any of the uh, doctrines of, of uh, God because we're just a stiff-necked people. So we have two gods of this earth right now. One's in charge, he's called Satan, a real individual, flesh and bone. And the other uh, will be God. The Father, once the Son, cleanses the earth and cleanses the people and teaches the people. One of the things we enjoy doing as mortals is killing people. If you read the Book of Mormon, I've read it uh, several times, actually too many times. I've done a lot of study in it, but all you really find is war. They, the two brothers, Laman and Lemuel uh, versus Nephite, their brother, younger brother, were fighting for they set, set foot on this, the promised land. They fought steadily until the Nephites were totally wiped out back in New York. And the Lamanites didn't stop then. They kept fighting and fighting and wiped their, their own people out. I doubt if there was any Lamanites left in the land by the time we got here as pilgrims from England. So to, to, to summarize it, Joseph Smith and Brigham Young give us the key. As God is as man is, God once was, and as God is, man may become. We're on a, a circle. We're right now in a testing period, but if we're successful and find and live the laws of God, we can continue on from graduation to graduation until we are God. We practice it, being fathers here in, in Zion and mothers, because it takes two to make a God. A perfect combination of the male and a perfect combination of the field united. United. Thank you.